QT prolongation is seen in all except options are hypothermia, then digitalis toxicity, hypocalcemia, Romano Van syndrome. Remember, in case of digitalis toxicity, uh, in fact, you will have normal QT interval, okay, or you will have a short QT interval. That is what you will observe in case of the digitalis toxicity. Remember, in hypothermia, hypocalcemia, Romano Van syndrome, you will have the QT prolongation. Now, let me, so these are all the etiologies causing QT prolongation. Now, I will take up the individual etiology, then I'll try to discuss what are the other ECG changes apart from QT prolongation in that individual etiologies. Like for example, you take hypokalemia, you will have the QT prolongation. But in hypokalemia, what are the other ECG changes apart from QT prolongation? The other ECG changes are the appearance of the U wave. Second important thing is the T wave, it becomes flat or inverted, right? The T wave, it becomes flat or inverted. And third important thing is about the QT prolongation. So what will happen to the QT interval? The QT will be prolonged. And not only QT interval, remember, even the PR interval is also prolonged, right? Even the PR interval is also prolonged, okay? So these are the ECG changes that you come across in patients with the hypokalemia. And one more important thing you need to know is, so the other ECG change that you will have in hypokalemia is the presence of the ST segment depression. So these are all the ECG changes that you will have in patients with hypokalemia. And this is the ECG of hypokalemia. So you can appreciate all the waves in this ECG. So number one, the appearance of the U wave. Number two, the appearance of the T wave inversion, right? And if you take the QT interval, the QT interval, it is being prolonged. And you don't have much of the PR prolongation here, but as the CVRT of the hypokalemia increases, even the PR interval is also being prolonged. So these are the ECG changes that you will have in patients with the hypokalemia. Now, the other electrolyte abnormality where you will have the QT prolongation is the hypocalcemia. So, if you take the normal calcium levels, it is around 8.5 to 10.5 milligrams per deciliter or some of the books, they also give even 9 to 11 milligrams per deciliter. So when the calcium level, when it is reduced to less than 8.5 milligrams per deciliter, that is the point when the QT prolongation starts. So you need to know both the ends of the calcium disorder. In hypokalemia, you will have long QT interval, but whereas if there is hypercalcemia, you will have what is called as the short QT interval. Okay. Hypercalcemia, you will have short QT interval. Hypocalcemia, you will have long QT interval. Okay. So these are the two ends of the calcium related disorders. And what did I tell you? Whenever the QT interval is prolonged more than 500 milliseconds, you see this ECG. What is the abnormality you are observing here? There is QT prolongation. Right? Along with the QT prolongation, you are noticing that the ECG is going to a state of a polymorphic ventricular tachycardia. So, when the QT interval is prolonged more than 500 milliseconds, what did I tell you? In these patients, they go into a state of the development of torsades D pointis, which is nothing but polymorphic ventricular tachycardia. Okay, right. Now, apart from hypokalemia and hypocalcemia, the other electrolyte abnormality where you will have the QT prolongation is that is in patients with the hypomagnesemia. So, what is the normal magnesium levels? The normal magnesium levels, if you observe, it is around 1.5 to 2 milli equivalents per liter. Okay, that is the normal magnesium levels. Okay, if you take in millimoles, it is around 0 0.8 to 1 millimole per liter. That is the normal magnesium level. Now, when the magnesium level is less than 0.8 millimoles per liter, that is the point when the individual will have the QT prolongation. That is related to hypomagnesemia. But remember, in hypomagnesemia, you will not only have the QT prolongation. The other abnormalities in the ECG that you can have is the patient can also develop the atrial and as well as the ventricular ectopics. 
right the atrial and as well as the ventricular ectopics and these atrial ectopics can go into a state of the atrial tachyarrhythmia ventricular ectopics will go into a state of the ventricular tachyarrhythmias or it may go into a state of torsades the point is as well so that is related to the magnesium story right now we were also discussing about you know the congenital long qt syndromes that is the romano van syndrome okay in this the answer is digoxin toxicity you will not have qt prolongation but what is romano van syndrome romano van syndrome it is a form of the congenital long qt syndrome so we have two congenital disorders or okay actually the uh, long qt syndrome you have long qt 1 2 3 4 5 and so on and so forth i have discussed about the congenital long qt in detail in the section of channelopathies right so you can go through the section of channelopathies part 1 where i have discussed in detail about this long qt syndrome now some of the congenital disorders uh, where you will have long QT is Romano-Van syndrome and the other one is Gerwell and Lange-Nielsen syndrome.